So we're going to do a waffle demo, but we're going to do it twice. So I might as well call the first one one because I know I'm going to do it twice. And a lot of what we're going to do for starters is going to follow what we've done before in our own GUI Zero programs. So we're going to do an import from the library of everything it has. And we're going to decide if we need any global constants. Okay. So is it fair to say that all of you have read and memorized the waffle uh, section on the GUI Zero tutorial page? Maybe not. Uh, has anybody looked at the waffle write up on the GUI Zero tutorial page? So tell us in a few brief words what is a waffle? Well, it, it's rows and columns, right? Yeah. And it's your choice of rows and columns. It's actually your choice about whether the waffles are circular or square. Uh, your choice of color and you can set those colors. So knowing where that's going, I'm going to say that it's fair to say that we want to set two global variables for rows and columns. And just to be arbitrary about it, I'm going to say that I'm going to make mine four by eight. And we'll see whatever else we need to throw in there. Maybe we'll say that maybe we're going to have some global variables. We don't know yet. Uh, from, yeah. From GUI zero, import, import everything. That's better. All right, now we now know because we like functions that as much code as possible is going to be inside of some function from our programs from here on out. And the, this is going to start with a function called main by convention. So I'm building a function. I'm not calling a function, I'm building a function. And I know I'm building a function because I use the keyword DEF, I give my function a name, and I have parentheses that right now are empty and I have a colon, and that's the beginning of a container. So this is old boring stuff that we've done a bunch of times before. I'm gonna build an application window. And now I'm going to build, and I'll, I'll give you a hint, we're gonna to have to name this widget. So we'll call it waffle board or waffle field or it doesn't matter. And it's gonna be built with a waffle function. So it will be an object of type waffle. We must tell it where it goes. We might tell it um, something called Dottie And which are going to be circles. So, uh, so Dottie is going to be true. Um, okay. Um, oh, sorry. I, <laughs> my eyes were on the wrong line there. That's why I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, I want to give it the, you know, make these things slightly bigger. So that's like a dimension of each element in pixels. And most importantly here, I need to give it a height in those dots. So that means it's going to be four rows and the width is going to be eight columns. So I never have to type the numbers four and eight except up here to declare them to be global because I'm going to need those in the in the future. 
All right. So we need to figure out what we can do with this or what we want to do with this. And this is what I want to do. I'm going to create three buttons. One button says color every other row alternately. So alternate colors on the rows. The other button is going to say alternate colors on the columns. And the other button is going to say clear everything back to white. So that's the, that's the goal. And I'm going to give us a break here. We're not going to use the grid manager because it's not that involved with, involved with that. And I know there's something about the buttons I want to change, so I'm going to, I'm going to give it a name. It'll be a push button. It must be an APP. The text in the button will say, the first one will say alternate rows. We know we need a command because if not, the button won't do anything. The name of that will be a function that we have to write called ALT rows. No space is allowed. But it's complaining because it doesn't have a function yet. And the reason I had to name it was because I wanted to say btn rows dot size dot text size needs to be a little bigger so that everything comes out kind of kind of balanced. All right. So I had so much fun doing that. I don't want to do it again. I'm going to copy it and change this to btn columns. Change this to alternate columns. Change this to get the text. And one more. Well, actually, it's in my paste buffer already. That's going to be a clear button. Total say clear. And uh, will be clear. The only thing to be careful with these commands is don't pick any Python keywords with them. Okay, and we're just about done. We're going to remember that if we don't say app display, we're not going to see our app. So we're going to do that. And that's the end of the main function. But what I've done now is I've defined a function, right? The function will never get called unless I call it. So it's in my best interest to actually call that function so it actually happens. Let's say that what I want to do now is I want to just try this. Um, but I have these errors here. Okay, yeah, all right. I know, I know what I'll do. I'm going to write these functions right now, but they're not going to do anything. Yes. Uh, you could actually put <laughs> command equals none here, and that would work too, as long as you don't click the button. But yeah, right, that, that will kind of minimize the changes that I'm making. So we know we need a function called alternate rows. And we don't want to write the function yet. And we know that um, we know that uh, PyCharm is going to holler at us if we don't put two blank lines between our functions. So we'll try to do that. So if we have alternate rows, we could also have alternate columns. And we could have one that says clear. Uh, 
right. Okay. That's not used. That's correct. So what do I have now? Right now I have basically what I would call a static program. It does a setup. Things are in them the places they're supposed to be, but there's no action in the program. It's not a bad time to check the program because if I'm not happy with what I have now, then why go ahead? Um, not bad, right? Let's see what we have. We have a four by eight check. Default color is white. They're kind of big. And there are three buttons that probably could use some spacing. But that's not that interesting. So um, I'll leave them that way for the time being. Good morning. So, so far what we've done is pretty simple. We've created a waffle. We've created three buttons and we haven't yet given ourselves a headache by trying to write the functions, the event handler functions. So I click these and nothing's going to happen. How are we doing so far? I didn't change the name. Oh, that's not good. Better? All right, so let's talk about alt rows and alt columns. I have kind of a big issue here. I, so what have I got? I've got eight times four, that's 32. I know I'm not gonna write 32 statements to change the colors individually, that's nuts. These colors are addressed in um, basically a list where the X index goes first, the Y index goes second the indices start from zero, as you might expect. It's, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Uh, what I want to do is I, I know that with a for loop and a range statement, I can cover a range of integers. Problem is, is that that range is a one dimensional range, right? Well, I've got a two-dimensional object. So that's going to be a problem. So with my loops, I can go like this. But after I go like this, I want to come down and go like this. Well, I can do that with another loop that after I finish doing this, I increase, after I finish moving my x across at y equals zero, I can just increment y in a loop and come down here and do that, increment it, increment it. And when y gets to 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, then I'm done. So this is actually something really, really valuable. And it's called a nested for loop. And I would bet just about anything that if you screw up the camera while you're trying to talk, um, if you're trying to do, if you're trying to do anything in two dimensions, the answer is going to be a nested for loop. So we'll study some more in other program classes. You will study some more the idea of things that are two dimensional. So planes are inherently two dimensional. Um, solid objects are inherently three dimensional, and there's no reason we can't nest these things to three different. And that's kind of a clue about what you might start thinking about in your projects that we'll talk about, I think, on Monday. Your final projects, think about what you might be able to do if you could handle a two-dimensional plane or a three-dimensional space. Well, I might as well make my life easy. Let's write my x first. For x in range, Um, now, what do I want the value of x to do? I want x to go from 0 to 7. Well, that's why I define this thing over here. Because if I put COLS here, if I put that there, that range is 0 through 7. 
and it's not a coincidence, right? <laughs> so uh, this here will cover the eight columns and the columns are across in the X direction. Well, that's not good enough for addressing a point. We know that a point needs X, Y coordinates. So I'm gonna nest in there another loop for Y in range and what goes in the parentheses? Rows. So there's my nested loop and where my cursor is now here, I have a value of X and I have a value of Y. So I can do something like this, waffle, uh, X comma Y. There's a property. Uh, okay, I know what's wrong. Ah, okay, I lost track of what I was doing. What I need to do is I need to, this is what I want to do, I'm not doing it right, but let's put this in here and then make it right. Okay. What I want to do is I want to turn the cell of the value X, Y to red, but it doesn't know what waffle is. Well, that's because I got the name wrong over here. It's WAF underscore board. And it says, I don't know what you mean. WAF underscore board, okay, all right. Why doesn't it know what I mean? Difficult question, actually. You're, you're giving me the answer, but yes. So the problem is, is that this is defined inside this function, and therefore it's not known outside the function. And the first answer that we come to, which is not the best answer, but it's an answer, is define this outside of any function. So go up here, and um, I don't know if we're gonna have any global variables, but let's call them global widgets. And that's gonna be WAF underscore board. Now, I don't wanna define it up here, because that's what my main is for. I just want to um, declare it, but unfortunately Python doesn't have that concept. But I can come close to doing that by setting its value equal to none. That comes close. So there's good news and bad news. The good news is this is now satisfied. The bad news is this now has an error that says you're shadowing something. And that's because it thinks I'm trying to define a new local variable with the same name. And it's warning me that that may not be what I'm trying to do. And since it's not, I must use the word global to say, if you see this thing in, in this function, it is a reference to the global variable. All right. Say what? Sure. So this says global, and it repeats the name over here. And that's the same name that I use up here. And now I can use that name in here. So once again, I have a green check mark, and now's not a bad time to see if, how things are going. So we hook this up to alt rows. So if I hit alt rows, Yay. If I hit alt rows, I, gen I, I call my function. Notice that function may not ever be called. So I have a bunch of code that I may never use. If I do this, nothing happens. Do this, nothing happens. Do this, that's my callback. That's my event handler. And it says, turn everything red. Well, that's good, but it's not what I said I was going to do. I said I was going to alternate the rows. But 
now I know that I have this global widget. I know about the nested uh, for loops. I know that the name of that widget will take an X, Y list and a dot color parameter, and I can set it equal to something. So what I need is I need a way in legitimate Python of saying alternate rows. What do you suggest? <coughs> How could I pythonically or mathematically even have the concept of alternate rows? Which rows are the alternate rows? Odds. Which are the other ones? Evens. How do we say that in Python? How do we say it in Python? I heard the magic word. Modulus. Um, and that's the percent, excuse me, that's the, that's the percent operator. If, 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 if a number mod two or modulus two is equal to zero, the number is even. Do I really care which is even and which is odd? I really don't. So I'm not going to sweat it. Am I going to test? What am I going to write here? Elif or else? Both. Who wants else? Who wants elif? Else. Why? Why so else? There's only two. There's no point in testing twice. It's not odd. It's even. So what we do is we copy this, we put it over here, we change this to blue, we still have a green check mark, we run the program again, we hit the button, and there we go. Okay. I, I don't hear any applause yet, but that's all right. Uh, wait, to save it for later, save it for later. It's, the best is yet to come. Does anybody want to talk about this line anymore? Or are you accepting that as saying that's the same as if y is even? So we could, we could actually say that. Uh, well, we could say this would probably be prettier. Even number rows. Odd number rows. So you can use your comments to help people who don't understand this figure out what's going on. That's not a bad use of comments. And this is somewhat under commented. So important takeaways here are, this is only going to get executed if the button is pressed. The idea of nested for loops is valuable for navigating things with two dimensions. Now, sometimes that doesn't always look exactly like two dimensions. Like, what about a grade book? What do we have in a grade book? We have um, rows of students and columns of grades. So there's your two dimensions. Obviously, something that physically has two dimensions, that's fine. All right, so some people will tell you that this is evil, illegal, and immoral. And there's an argument to be made for that. The argument is that global things are bad because it allows anybody to mess with them. Don't do it unless it's a constant, which these are, but it's actually not because Python has no way of enforcing that to be a constant. So um, let's talk about an alternative. Do you agree that the only outside information that this function needs is the waffle widget? Right, everything else in here is self-contained. There's not much else in here. There's X and Y, that's self-contained. The only thing it needs here is the waffle widget. 
And one of the things that you didn't tell me about functions <clears throat> is that functions can accept values. They don't have to have values, but they can accept values. And because it's Python, those values can be anything. They can be variables, they can be constants, they can be uh, objects. And the really freaky thing that I finally found a use for is that they can actually be other functions. You can pass a function, the name of a function in to a function. So let's try that and see what happens. Let me call this waffle. And therefore, I'm going to change this name to waffle. And I'm going to be prepared to get rid of this. I'm going to change this name to waffle. And now I find by clicking on any of these that these are all related to each other. So this is the name, this is the name that will be assigned to whatever is passed to this, which better be the name of a waffle widget. So, how are we doing here? Um, looks like we're doing okay, but I really hope that this doesn't work. Yep, doesn't work. Good. That's a good thing, because if it did work, I'd be embarrassed. Okay. I'm not quite sure why it didn't figure it out before it ran it. But it says type error, alternate rows missing one required positional argument called waffle. So I think programming languages in general are kind of inconsistent about which are the parameters and which are the arguments. One of them is the things that are called, the other is the calling list. So we now have a requirement to provide to this function something which better be a waffle widget. And that means I need to go down here and I need to rethunk things a little bit. And I get to add something that we haven't talked about yet. I need to add to it an arguments list and take that literally. Even if it's only one thing, it has to be a list. And it's going to be waffle board. Um, and I'm betting that I can take this out. And I've got a green check mark. Okay, alternate rows. Hey, no errors, right? So it's all good. So here's my alternative. If you believe that somebody is going to either mock you or think less of you for using a global variable, See if you can uh, get away without it. And how do we do that? We take the thing that our event handler needs, the information that it needs, which is the name of the waffle widget, and we pass it as an argument. Notice that this thing is known here. It's not known here. But by the time it gets here, the object has been renamed for this function into waffle and it's known there. Problem solved. Um, although I guess I was being a little light in saying that people are going to make fun of you. It's not a bad interview question, is it? Uh, so if somebody's interviewing you for a programming job and they say, what's your alternative to having global variables to be shared? then the answer is pass them as parameters or arguments. Okay, if I can do this and it works, and in my heart I believe it's similar to doing this, I'm gonna copy and paste. I'm gonna put a uh, waffle in here. Uh, I'm gonna come down here. Uh, this is a button. No, this one here. And although I don't think it's required, it would be conventional to put your arguments after your command. It's the same argument getting passed. 
off the board. Okay. Uh, so we're happy there. And what's the difference between what's the difference between alternate rows and alternate columns? Kind of a trivial question. Yeah, and and one is represented by y, and the other is represented by. Still have a green check mark. We've got this. We've got that. Now we haven't written this yet. Well, I think this is going to be real easy. It's not going to be too hard. But we've got this to our heart's content. Um, again, the best is yet to come, so you don't have to applaud right now. <laughs> here's, the, here's the question for ask after the break. Can I write this so that these things change automatically, hands off? Conceptually, yes or no? Sure. Practically, we got to talk. We're going to have some issues. Now that we're writing GUI zero programs, which really are TK input programs, it's not quite as easy as using a simulator. Simulator, while true, sleep, it's not going to work. And we'll talk about that later. But before we do, let's just handle the clear button because it's pretty darn trivial. I'm going to take this stuff again, put it in here. There is no concept of odd and even. There is no other color. This is ugly, so I'm going to do that. This is going to be called O, couldn't result, oh, sure, yeah. This is over-indented. This is white. This is too many spaces. This needs an argument passed. And you've got to remember that it's a list. Even if there's one element, it's still a list. It has to be written as a list. So that was easy. Test, block, block, and block. While it's not a very complicated program, there are a lot of interesting aspects to what's going on in this program. So the aspects are rows and columns, two-dimensional nested loops. You might as well call this the X dimension and call this the Y dimension because that's kind of conventional. Each of the individual pixels in the waffle are referred to by an XY list. Obviously X comes first, Y comes second. They support a bunch of different things which you read about in the man page, dot color being the most common one. Um, and we avoided any global variables by passing that what we needed into the function. So that's what we like about functions. If the function needs something, needs to consume something, pass it, pass it as an argument. And that, or needs more than one, there are even multiple arguments. Very important, very valuable. What we haven't discussed yet is if your function needs to return a value, how do we do that? And the answer is with a return statement, but we don't have to do that in, uh, in this case. All right, so questions, comments, or it's just time for a break. That's as up as it is. I mean like now, I'm sorry. Okay, so here's alternate rows, alternate columns. Which you want to see? Okay, so why don't I? Um, yeah. 
project? Which project is that? The one you proposed for public. I mean, yeah. I, I don't remember the name of the project. The one with the cranes? Yeah. We're not going to use the simulator. Um, for so we're, we're doing this, right? Yes. Yeah. We're not. Go ahead. So my, my question is that, like, mm -hmm. you have to oh, like, change the colors, right? Uh -huh. You just use, like, the, the rows and columns that are being referred to it as, like, the one. Well, X and Y. And y. Yeah. yeah. X and Y. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the problem. It's X and Y, but the problem is how do you figure out which X and Y and how do you figure out which color? Right. Uh, well, it doesn't work automatically. It works not as good. Yeah. Right. What we'll do after the break is we'll get this to work automatically. That's what we're scoring. All right. So why don't I freeze this up here? Uh, why don't I? All righty. And we've, we've got this program doing about as much as it's going to do. You know, there's nothing left to do here. The question is, or the assignment is, the challenge is, let's take this program and see if it'll work by itself. Um, this is going to be similar enough that I'd want to copy. So I'm going to copy this, paste it back in my project, change the number one to the number two, and while it's not super important, double check that we've got this up here. Um, and my goal is to make this program work by itself. So let's start implementing that goal. There is no more concept of clear. If the program is going to work by itself, it's just going to work by itself. There are no push buttons, right? Because the program works by itself. There, trust me, there won't be much left. Okay. So, so here's our main right now. We still, this is still an issue with the naming that thing. Uh, I haven't changed all rows and all columns. I've got a problem. Okay. So, from what we know about the simulator, if I said uh, do something to simulator to change something every second. I, I build a, you know, a while true loop in here. And do stuff. Um, and what's PyCharm telling us? This code is unreachable because there's no out of the while true loop. But we want this to blink forever. What happens if we write stuff in this loop and we never execute line 39? Huh? Won't show up. Won't show up, right? So that's like a big problem, right? <laughs> so we, we need to deal with that. And that's something that was very concerning to me when I first was learning this until I thought, well, actually it was a Google that said, um, how do you make GUI zero displays refresh themselves? Because that's really what I'm asking it to do. And what I'll find out is there's yet another event handler. And it is a time-based event handler, which to me was a real aha moment that such a thing existed. They actually come in two varieties. And they could be attached to anything. There's not much here, so we'll attach it to, uh, to APP. And it comes in two varieties. The variety we want is repeat. And notice it has things like timer and function and arguments. The other one is after, and it has the similar things. So after is a one-time delay. Repeat is a cyclical thing. It'll do it forever. So we want app.repeat. And it's going to need some stuff. It needs to know time. And if you look up the, the tutorial, it says time in milliseconds. So this is going to be a one second delay. I want to perform the function that I have not yet written called toggle. 
And I would like to pass to that function an argument, but whether it's only one argument or not, it has to be in a list. And it's going to be the waffle board again because I don't want anybody to make fun of me for using a global variable that I didn't have to make global. Um, so this function is going to be called once a second. And that's, when you say app display, you basically turn your program over to GUI zero who turns it over to tkinter. And part of what tkinter will do, it'll respond to this event. What event? A time event. How often? Once a second. What's its response? Its response is to call your function. So this is another callback or event handler. Time-based event handler. Excuse me? thousand milliseconds. Does that make it a second? Yes, it does. Because mil would be metric for a thousand. Never knew that. All, all you metric guys. Uh, well, actually, I guess that's the same in English units. All right, so all we need here is we need a toggle function. That doesn't sound too hard. I hope not. I only have a little bit of time to write it. So we're going to define a toggle function. That toggle function is going to accept a... Uh, widget it doesn't know yet that it's going to accept a widget but we're going to call it waffle just like we did before <clears throat> and now we're going to have another problem if this is going to toggle that's kind of like true false or since it's going to toggle rows and columns maybe we'll toggle the string back and forth um when i finish this function that variable doesn't exist anymore. So when one second trigger the function, tr 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 function finishes, no more variable. So how am I gonna hold the value of a variable that's gonna stick around forever? Put it where? No, it can't be in the function, it's gonna go away. That's gotta be global. So sometimes you just have to give in. So this is going to be a global variable. And I couldn't up, come up with a clever name for true and false. So I'm calling my variable rows or columns. And I'm going to assign it a string initially called rows. Because this is outside of all my functions, it exists for the scope of the program. As long as the program runs, this variable exists and will never be reinitialized here because it's not looping back. So that's good news. Because, believe it or not, we're almost done. Because if My new variable is equal to rows. What do you think I want to do? Uh, do I know how to do that? Do I know how to? We have a function, and that's why I didn't erase the function, because we need the function. We're going to use that function, alt rows. So here's alt rows and alt columns come up in our list. Uh, we're going to call alt rows. We're going to pass along waffle to it because it's going to need it. And trust me, if it's not rows, it's columns. That's all columns. <clears throat> Waffle. Can't be up to too many lines. 
Yeah, I do. Okay. I got my green check mark. I'm going to change this to run waffle two. Well, now's not time for applause, is it? No. So what do we have to do? I got to change something. So if I expect this to do one or the other within the function, I better change something. And all I need to do is to say alt No, all I need to do is say rows or columns equals C-O-L-S. And down here, I need to say rows or columns equals rows. And um, PyCharm says um, you're not getting away with it. It's not happening. What did I do here? I defined a new variable local to this function, and it doesn't know the value of that. So what do we have to do? <coughs> Spreak up. So uh, all we have to do is say, hey, that variable that you don't know, the reason you don't know it is it's a global variable. Now you know it. And the reason is, is because it has to have a value for the very, there are two reasons. One is it has to have a value over here and the other I'm going to change it here or here. So for both of those reasons, it needs to be declared global in this new function. So notice why we like functions or maybe we could change it to why we love functions. We're not rewriting anything for the main guts of lighting up rows or columns. We're just going to call those functions in these two places. If it's not rows, it's columns. If it is rows, next time it's columns. If it's columns, next time it's rows. Now that's not quite as pretty as if we would have made it true or false. Because then we could have used not and flipped it around. Uh, alternate columns. And I guess we might as well. Okay. So if this is going to change, that means within the function we need to make the change or else we're always going to do the same thing. And we arbitrarily decided to initialize it to rows. And I forgot to notice if it was rows that, um, you know, that, that did it. All right, let's try again. <laughs> You're too kind, <laughs> but I agree. Um, so this, is, this, this gives you a whole bunch of other things to think about. This gives you the idea of thinking about how can I write a program that does stuff hands off. The other thing that you can think about is if this program obtained data from some external thing, like the temperature in the room, the humidity in the room, how backed up the traffic was, you wouldn't have to have that, have somebody interact with the program. You could say every second, every minute, go out, acquire data, and refresh the thing. And that was actually the Google that I made, was how do you refresh a display without a handler? And the answer is, you have a handler, but it's not a device handler, it's a time, it's a time-based event handler. And if you want to do it repeatedly, it's app.repeat. Or anything.repeat. There's very little left here. So we actually, this turned out to be a simpler program in terms of lines of code, but a more complicated program in terms of, um, in terms of what it needs to do. So this has a lot less going on, but this is a critical step. Without this step, it's not happening. 
And the reason that toggle gets the name of the widget is because it passes it along to either all rows or all columns. So those things can get passed through from one thing to the other. Um, questions, comments, ideas about how this might help you do a more interesting project. And if you don't know how to do it. All righty. Um, okay, Garrett, anything on your end? I think I understand everything. You're going to be sending out the Waffle 2 demo in the email, right? I'll send out both. All right, sweet. I ended up copying down the first one already. And your, your name is now changed from Dell to Garrett, so it's all good. Yep, I figured it out finally. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to stop the recording at this point because...